Today I'm going to start the process of removing my roof gasket to uh, prepare to put on a new one. I may not get it all done today, but uh, time will tell. <laughs> so I have already taken off about five inches experimenting with how I'm going to take it off. And uh, this rubber backing has a plastic sheet attached to it that, uh, I mean, you have to take it off individually. A thin plastic membrane that's attached to the back of the gasket that you, if you're lucky, you can get some of it to come up with when you pull the rubber up. But uh, for the most part, it seems like it's wanting to stay down on the A-liner roof. So I have my little trusty, dusty, uh, uh, little Walmart razor scraper and I have started this process and you'll also see that I have uh, uh, some pine needles and things on here and that uh, this part of the was pulled up on its own just from the gasket being old you can see another part way up there that pulled apart just because it's old So, uh, in my experimentation here, uh, I have removed about this much of it, and it's kind of an, if you give it a nice, even, slow pull, the gasket won't tear. You can, you can see that I've torn it here trying to pull, and uh, some of it also doesn't seem to want to come up properly, but a slow, even pull will release that rubber from the plastic membrane that is the actual adhesive to the to the A-liner roof. That is sticking down really well. And uh, some of this membrane you can kind of see it on, uh, I'll show you that when I get more of it pulled off, is actually coming up with it. But a nice, slow, even pull. This will still have to be cleaned eventually. But you can see in a very short period of time here, I have pulled this almost halfway across the, the, the top of the A-liner. I'm going to get up a little higher here on the ladder. I still got two steps left. So I'm not being unsafe there and just put some pressure on. Not very fast, not very hard, just enough to make it so it... It's, oh, that's what happens. I watched a friend of mine out in Arizona try and do this and the problem is you can't walk on the roof, you can't do anything like that so I'm, I'm trying to accomplish all this from a perch on a ladder on the side. Another thought I'm having at the moment, oh that one came off too would be to uh, have some type of a uh, bar in there that you could pry up on it but you can see that I've gotten quite a bit of it here and it's still tacky under here from uh, the uh, here is an example of that plastic film that's used to glue the rubber to the film the film to the A-liner roof I haven't checked yet for sure, but I think I'm going to have to use uh, something such as acetone to get the rest of this off. There is uh, silicone caulk here on both sides of the groove, and I can show you close-ups of those afterwards. Uh, 
I'm quite happy that I got this this much of it off in such a short period of time. I'm going to change uh, positions here and come back and remove the rest, and then we'll take a, a better look at it. Dive, dive, ahoo, ahoo, dive, dive. Here is the rubber gasket that I've been removing. And uh, I had talked about there is a piece of a plastic film on the back. Here's the example of what that film is and what that looks like. Uh, it is the interface between gluing the rubber straight down to the roof of the A-liner and uh, so that this is more or less a sacrificial thing so that you're not having to scrape this type of uh, uh, rubber sticking to the glue and you can see here that it's just a a backing that comes with it hello So I am back. It's later in the day. I had to run an errand. Uh, so now I'm going to try and remove the rest of this. And you can see here, I'm trying to pick up the uh, plastic underlying membrane has pulled away from the From the rubber gasket and when that does happen it's very tough to get it to come in a reasonable fashion so I hope I can get these to meet up and come together. Oh. And you can see here that I'm going to try and start from this end. I seem to be under the plastic membrane here. And again, I am just using a nice, steady, even pressure. I'm trying to watch to make sure that the membrane isn't ripping away. I'm going to get my phone and try and video some of this. If I get in there close enough, you can see the adhesive that is pulling away. I'm down to about the last six inches here. Again, a nice even pressure. Slow. You don't want that underlying membrane to tear. It's just harder to get up. And I don't know if you can see it there or not, but now I'm just pulling the membrane. I've not got any rubber. It's just the leftover membrane. About that, huh? All right, now I'm going to have to get my little uh, scraping tool and uh, try and get the small remnants of membrane down and the uh, silicon rubber that's laid here to seal, seal the gasket material. Now one thing I noticed that the original gasket material here that went on this was four inches wide 
And the new stuff I have is either five or six inches wide. So it's going to be pretty important to make sure that I clean these seals off because it goes, uh, if, I, if I lay a piece of this back down here, the, uh, where the front half of the roof comes down, it's only coming down about an inch and a half away from this uh, sealant here for the dormer. There's a, a piece of uh, aluminum that's bolting down a gasket there that is caulked and sealed to keep water from running in and leaking under the dormer. So that's my next step is to start scraping away some of this uh, silicon rubber and uh, then I'll have to start getting some uh, acetone or another type of recommended cleaner. I have to look that up yet to uh, remove this residue from the plastic membrane gasket. All right, here you go. Make my depth 50 feet. I dive, dive, hauga, hauga. This is the original installation of this gasket from the factory. I've never replaced this before. And you need to be careful because, because this razor blade will dig into the, the roof material if you're a little aggressive with it. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate here taking some of this off. Hopefully it goes well. I've made a pretty big amateur mistake here. I have uh, plugged in my microphone and forgot to turn it on. What is happening here is I am uh, showing you that uh, the new seal, which is properly cut to length, uh, has a backing on it and uh, it needs to be placed on the A-liner roof and be in the right place. And um, if you pull the entire backing off and try and place it down, it makes it uh, hard to put in exactly the right place. So what I have decided to do is to take the seal and take my razor blade and make a slice just barely through the uh, white backing adhesive backing that is on the seal and uh, 
remove it after it is in place. Here I am uh, actually taking the razor and uh, cutting through the paper backing that's uh, on the seal. And uh, you'll see that uh, as I go along, I'm making sure that uh, it's actually separating. You'll see me pushing down there, making sure that it, the two pieces of backing pull away from each other. And I continue on down the rest of the strip. And I've cut through, and now I'm just going to go back and make sure that uh, the strip is pulled away. Uh, each side of it is pulled away from itself. And you'll see uh, the reason that I've decided to do this uh, when it comes down to the installation. So here I am back at the A-liner and I am uh, doing some final touch-ups on cleanliness uh, about that area uh, where I'm wiping and uh, even here on the near side you can tell a little bit where the uh, silicone rubble, rubber was on the uh, old seal. It demonstrates how wide, much wider the new seal is. And uh, I have the uh, roof propped up with a piece of plywood there in the center. You can see that a little bit off line uh, behind my wind cheetah. As you can see, I have the uh, seal and it still has the backing on. And I am going to uh, put it in its place where it will eventually be installed. And uh, recheck everything and make sure it's aligned properly. Here I am placing some weights on the uh, seal to help hold it in place, keep it in line. And you can see it move a little bit there. Uh, I'm using its guide, uh, the uh, piece of the hinge mounting plate for the dormer. Uh, and that was caulked. Uh, when I got done cleaning everything, I put a fresh bead of caulk all along that to seal that up. And then uh, coming around to the side, and uh, we are going to start uh, removing the uh, paper backing. And recheck the alignment. You can see that I have uh, slid it back there a little bit. And. Uh, we're going to come back around to this side and start removing the backing. Checking the alignment again. Making sure it's in the right place. Now I'm going to pick it up and start removing the backing from one side. Get my fingernail under it there. And you can see that I've more or less twisted it under. Again, rechecking its alignment to the hinge of the dormer. And I've stuck the first section down. And now as I hold down on the seal and remove more of that tape, on the front half, I can stick it down as it goes along. Uh, one of the problems that I had here, and you'll see it in a moment, is that uh, I didn't really have any way to hold the center down very well. And uh, actually when I was pulling on the tape here, the center shifted forward just a little bit. It did not affect the outcome of the project. It just made it a little bit sloppier looking. So 
So now I'm on the other side and I'm going to remove. Ah, get my handy dandy grabber to get the tape and bring it over to where I could reach it with my hand. And now I am slowly pulling that tape out, the backing paper. checking my alignment and seeing that I pulled it forward a little bit. Uh, once this is stuck down, there isn't much you can do about taking it back up without destroying it. So now I'm going to remove the bricks. The extra weight I put on it to hold it down. Press it in place. Babble, 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 babble. And calling myself an idiot because I wasn't paying close enough attention when I pulled it through. You can see in the center there is a slate bow. And now I'm going to remove the backing from the other half. Since the front half is holding it down all right, all I had to do was is, uh, invert the paper out. And it just slid along, being careful to stick it down. And now to pull it out the rest of the way, get the grabber so I can reach it. And you can see that it is just slipping right out from under it very easily. And now that it's out, I will push down and seat the adhesive on the strip. Now that the seal is all in place, the next thing to do is to uh, caulk it, seal it off. And here is the sealant that I am using. It's just a regular GE silicone uh, caulking. And uh, the next sections of me applying it, uh, I am just going to run at a high speed so that uh, I help shorten the length of the video here. Uh, here I am propping up the front half of the roof to give me room to uh, work to put the caulking down. 
and you can see I've got it propped up there and uh, I am starting to apply the caulking to the rear part of the seal uh, basically tying in the seal that I just put down with the caulking that I did up against the uh, mounting of the dormer hinge Here I am showing a piece of plywood that I incorporated as a tool to dress, in other words, smooth out the caulking compound, the silicone, after it was in place. Well, it's kind of in the shade now, but that is the installation of my rear roof seal on my A-liner. It's too bad I didn't get it straight enough, but live and learn. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> like Bob says, learn from my mistakes. Okay, so here it is. You can see where I had the mistake I wasn't paying close enough attention and along this section the seal pulled forward as I was pulling the backing seal paper off of it to expose the adhesive so uh, but you can see there's a there's a good amount of overlap there I have uh, both sides of the front latched down and uh, the only thing that might be a problem with this is water might tend to pool there uh, I may go back afterwards and put, try and fill in the hole a little bit, but when a camper's up in the air like this, water pools against this anyway, unless you set up the camper so that it's uh, low on this side, one side or the other. I prefer it to be slightly lower on the non-entry side so that uh, uh, when water does pool up here, if you step on the steps to go in, even with the stabilizers down, the A-liner rocks a little bit to that side, and uh, water that's pooled up in these two things drip off that side, because you're changing the level. And uh, this side here actually drips right down the middle of the doorway. So uh, I prefer to keep this side, the front side, I'm sorry, the, the driver's side of the A-liner, I prefer to keep that a little bit lower. Not much. Quarter to a half a bubble. I always say I'm a half a bubble off. <laughs> so, I hope you found this uh, video enlightening. You find out what my mistakes are and don't repeat them. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it was fun to do. And, uh, remember to like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you would, please. And, uh, Hit the bell for the notifications and you will uh, be notified whenever I put a new video up, which isn't very often. I'm not a big bother. <laughs> See you later. I'll be in.